Rugby Championship 2021 is about to get underway, folks. It's the All Blacks and the Wallabies. You might be asking yourself, didn't they play last week? They did. That was Blitters Low Cup 1, but not part of Rugby Championship. So this is Blitters Low Cup 2, start of Rugby Championship. It's a bit confusing if you live maybe outside Australia, New Zealand, you're not used to it. But anyway, uh, it's Eden Park, it's All Blacks, it's Wallabies. Again, and yes, they played last week. They weren't originally going to play the two games at Eden Park, but with uh, COVID and stuff, rescheduling of games meant that Wellington was kind of booked out. So we get two games at Eden Park, which is uh, maybe a second crack at it for the Aussies to break that hoodoo. But um, as with last week, the All Blacks go into this one uh, as favorites. We'll go over the lineups. I'll put those in the description so you guys can have a gander if you wish. Uh, some of the stats from last week, the predictions, and you guys can let me know your thoughts on how you think things are going to play out. Uh, last week was 33-25, which on paper looks pretty close. And I've seen a lot of uh, kind of talking up, man, if Lolo CO just kicked his goals, they might have been able to win it, and that's fair. Um, obviously, it's a different game if he kicks his goals, but I don't think the All Blacks were ever really in danger of their losing that one personally. Uh, Fozzie was asked about it as well, kind of dismissed it, basically saying the way the game went. Uh, the All Blacks were, once they got established into the lead, never really looking like going behind. And uh, I do also think that's fair. Lodosio's copped a bit of flack for his goal kick, and he's not a bad goal kicker, man, but he did have an off night. Against the French, a few weeks earlier, he had kicked remarkably well. So um, hopefully we see an improvement from him because he is playing this one. But we'll start with the All Blacks. Uh, Bauer, Taylor, Laulala, same front row, Retallick and White Locks, same locks. And uh, Iwane, that's Akira, Papali'i and Savia. It's the same forward pack all round. So more of the same uh, for the All Blacks. They may have been tempted to ring some changes. Uh, Eden Park, you know, generally pretty happy hunting ground, but maybe... Uh, based on the, the end of that game not going that well with the Aussies kind of powering through 10 minutes with a bunch of points and Fozzie in the press conference, you know, visibly kind of annoyed about the way the game ended from his team. Uh, maybe it's a kind of second chance for these guys to get it right with the bench guys um, for the full 80, not just for the kind of patches where they were able to dominate. So yeah, it's the same forward pack. Um, penalties was a thing that there was a bit of a concern as well. Sam Whitelock's been talking up there. Uh, their need to to kind of control that a bit better. The All Blacks conceded, what was it, like 18 penalties last week to the Aussies? Nine, so a concerning number. His locking partner, Brody, was guilty with four of those, which is too many for sure. Um, so that'll be an area for the All Blacks to clean up for the forwards. Uh, Papa Ali. Uh, continued his kind of work rate, getting 15 out of 15 tackles. It's just the kind of thing that we're used to seeing from him. He is a kind of a work rate guy, able to just absorb all that kind of pressure. Uh, Smith and Maunga continue on 9-10. Both those guys were pretty impressive last week. Maunga still proves a pretty hard guy to bring down. Quite capable of getting an intercept, as he proved. You know, two clean breaks from him. Aaron Smith with that passing. Uh, he was also interviewed last week because it was his 100th about... Uh, he wasn't happy with, his, happy with his passing at the start of the game, but he kind of felt he got into it, and he did produce a couple of proper rippers to get some try assists uh, for the All Blacks in the second half. Midfield does have a shift. It's Havili and Rico Iwane, so ALB had a knock to his knee. So he is um, he's not in the squad this week, so Rico moves from left wing uh, into that 13 channel, which is, I, mean, I guess, kind of good, because the All Blacks seem to want to use him as a utility wing and midfielder so he needs to get game time with both so that's exactly what they are getting from him uh alb will be a hard guy to replace though because he was apart from all i think the top run meter guy uh for the all blacks last week havili has been solid still misses like three tackles a game i swear he misses about three tackles a game which is too many i mean he made like eight or something might have been more it was good but he can't be missing three tackles a game need to improve um Severis moves to the left wing. Will Jordan is back in. Remember, he was kind of nursing. I think he was pretty much recovered last week, but they decided not to risk him, so he's back fit. He's in on the right wing, and Damian McKenzie, who had a pretty solid game last week, six defenders beaten. He's there at full back as well. So largely pretty stable lineup. It seems like just ALB being out, they've kind of had to shuffle things around, and Will Jordan is the guy who comes in. So it's just the kind of one change in name for the starting um 
starting 15, although a few guys have got different jersey numbers on their back. Uh, Tokiaho, Tui Nukuafe, and uh, Ta'avao are the, uh, the front row replacements. That's the same as last week. So Coles, remember he tightened up with his calf last week, was originally named on the bench. He's not named again, so I guess his calf has still not come right. Scott Barrett is named. He was crook last week, some kind of illness. Um, they left him out, but he is back. So Tuinu, not Tuinu Kofi, Tupulotu will drop out of the 23. Uh, Jacobson is still there. And um, they've had one change in terms of the bench. That's uh, for the backs. It's TJ Peranara comes in for Brad Weber. Bodie and Jordy Barrett are still there as well. So you've still got that Barrett bomb squad on the bench if you want to bring on three Barretts at one time. You can. Uh, some other guys who people thought may feature, likes of Satutu and Frizzell. Uh, have been sent to play NPC. So, um, yeah, not in the plans at the moment, seemingly. The Wallabies, likewise, have kept things relatively stable, although I think it's probably one or two more changes than what the All Blacks have got. Uh, Slipper, Paenga, Mosa, and Ala Alatoa is that same front row, and Slipper and Paenga, Mosa especially got through a lot of tackles last week. Slipper had 13 out of 13. Paenga, Mosa had 15 out of 16. So uh, those guys were busy. And scrummaging wise, you think they did a pretty a pretty solid job. To be fair, uh, Swain and Phillip are the locks, so that means Salakai Loto actually drops to the bench. And I can't remember the last time he didn't start for the Wallabies. He's been a mainstay for the Wallabies for ages. He's their main lineout guy, Salakai Loto. So it'll be interesting to see how Swain and Phillip pair up together. Phillip was on the bench. It's not a huge change. It's just kind of one guy starts, one guy rides the pine. And uh, then they've switched around for the next week. Uh, Swinton is back. Uh, he had a niggling injury last week, but he is back fit. He's in there at six, so he takes Valtini's spot. Valtini, though, is still in the starting 23. He's at eight, so he takes Wilson's spot. So Wilson ends up dropping to the bench for this one. Hooper is still there at seven. Swinton's certainly going to look to bring, uh, bring a bit of that kind of mongrel which is something that's maybe been lacking from the Wallabies pack at times. Like, Valtini's a big boy, but I don't think he's got the kind of same grit and mongrel that Swinton's got. Different kinds of players, but uh, both those guys will need to add a bit of physicality, you would imagine. Um, and Wilson can certainly add some impact from the bench because he is a high-energy, high-tempo player. So if I was coach, which I'm certainly not, I'd be telling Valtini to go gangbusters for 40 and then bring on Wilson not long after, but um, we'll see how Dave Rooney plays. It's certainly a lot smarter man than I am. Uh, the young 19 combo of McDermott and uh, Lolasio continue. Like I mentioned, Lolasio, not a bad kicker. Eden Park last week, very windy. Still kicked a lot worse than um, than he no normally would, even on a windy day. So expect to see better from him. Fingers crossed for the Wallabies. They will need him to be a bit better. Um, they've had a few changes in the backs as well, though. Tamua starts... And uh, Paisami is moved to the 13 jersey. Paisami is kind of alternated between both of those. So they got a double playmaker with Tamua at 12. And Tamua may even kick. I don't know. I think they'll probably leave it with Lolasio, but he could kick if needs be. Uh, you got two capable goal kickers there. Uh, Korobiti's kind of served his time after having one week off um, for breaking team protocols. He's there on the left wing, which means Callaway has to shift from left to right. Uh, right. And uh, Callaway looked... Um, Looked pretty good last week, scored a try, uh, you know, beat some defenders, so thought he, he looked pretty good. And um, Banks is still there at fullback, so Iki Tau is your man out of the 23, uh, sorry, out of the 15, but he drops to the bench. Speaking of White, like I misspoke before, he is on the bench, he's back from injury. So Jake Gordon drops out of the 23, must have Nick White on the brain, it's that mustache. But either way, he's an experienced guy to bring on. And you got Reese Hodge there on the bench still as well. So he could potentially goal kick if things don't go all that well. But I honestly don't think Lolasio is going to have, what was it, like 29% last week for the Wallabies goal kicking? I can't see that happening again. But anyway, we'll kind of wait and see. Uh, Dave Rennie has called upon his guys to play more clinically for the full 80. Kind of a similar message, which Fozzie's sending out, to be fair. So, um, yeah. Like I mentioned, last week was 33-25. So looked tight. But for a while, it was looking like it was going to be a hiding. The Wallabies did well to kind of come back into it. So they will take that kind of end of that game as a bit of a um, a mental boost after still losing the game. The All Blacks will maybe either be feeling a touch vulnerable based on the final 10 minutes of the game or looking to have a point to prove, maybe a bit of both. Um, 
over the last five games, it hasn't changed. I mean, it's still three wins for the All Blacks, one win for the Wallabies, and one draw. Uh, but that draw, if you look at the last five, is going to disappear because that is the oldest of the results. That's 16 all game uh, last year. And Wellington average score over these most recent five games is 28. 15. Eden Park hoodoo still goes on like I mentioned it's been since the 80s that the Wallabies have got a win there the more recent stuff though last week kicks from hand was 10 to 12 with the All Blacks having 10 the Wallabies having 12 I know some people who were also watching the Springboks and Lions series were saying man it was really refreshing to watch this game you know less kicking but it had a lot of knock-ons man the first half uh, prior to the kind of 38th minute or whatever it was was a wee bit ugly a lot more knock-ons than we saw in that final British and Irish Lions Springboks test for sure. Both these teams looked a wee bit rusty. Second half was uh, was certainly much better uh, viewing. Lineouts: the All Blacks were at 100%, 8 from 8. The Wallabies line-out, 15 from 18, did get better. But those early three that they lost really stopped their momentum at the start of the game. The Wallabies needed to go out and get a lead. Put the All Blacks under pressure, I feel. But um, yeah, like I said, it got better throughout the game. So... Maybe that's a theme the Wallabies can take into this game. Going forward as they did kind of come into the game. The goal kicking 71%, 29%. Neither side will be all that happy with that. Although it was very windy like I mentioned. Uh, but certainly the Wallabies 29% can only get better. Um, the possession of territory run was a weird one. Where the All Blacks kind of had all of the possession territory for the first half. And then the Wallabies had it for the second. It may have just been the way the kind of wind was blowing. It was easier to play one direction than the other but that being said most of the points were scored in that second half so maybe it's not that much of a factor i already mentioned penalties conceded was 18 to 9 so as, um, as an all blacks fan you can't be doing that two weeks in a row um yeah it's just it's just not conducive to winning rugby uh that being said the all blacks are predicted to get a pretty solid win the bookies have got us by 22 points and the rugby forecast algorithm says 17 points it was all a bit closer than that last week, but as I mentioned, Clyde, for a while it wasn't. So anyway, we will see how things go. You guys let me know your thoughts on how this one is going to go. Do you think the Wallabies can crack on based on what we saw from them in those fun, uh, kind of final 10 minutes? Or do you think the All Blacks will not kind of take the foot off the throat like they maybe did last week? And uh, they'll push on for a bigger win. We will see. It is Eden Park. It is this Saturday at 7.05 p.m. Very much looking forward to this one. You guys let me know your thoughts. Drop the video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you manage to get all 12 minutes away through it. But um, yeah, take care of yourselves and I'll talk to you soon. See you later.